So far we've been working completely in the computer. At some point you need to get this out onto paper. You want to send it to somebody, show it, discuss with tutor, whatever. So we have to move from paper space to sorry, you have to move from model space to paper space. Okay. Now you have one model space which holds all the design information, but you can have multiple paper spaces. Each one allocated to say a different machine or a different file type. So let's go to layout one and see what we've got. Okay, the, the computer automatically generates something for you to work with. And we've got grey area here representing our kind of desktop. We've got a white piece of paper. We've got a dash line as a printing boundary. And the green object is a viewport, which is basically a lens looking back to model space. And it's automatically filled with whatever it finds in model space. But none of this is to an architectural scale yet. We'll come to that in a moment. So let's firstly define a piece of paper to work on. So we right click layout one and from this the, the menu that has cascades it's slightly out of view. I can't capture it because it's lower than my screen capture. Choose page setup manager. Okay, repeat, choose page setup manager. Then click on modify. And we have to decide on either a piece of hardware to print to or a file type. Now in my machine, I've got access to the main printers in the in the college, but I'm going to choose an Adobe PDF to use for this setup. So it would create a file instead of a printed out piece of paper. So I choose Adobe PDF. It's then going to offer me paper sizes to use with that. Scroll down until I can see A3 and select A3. What to plot is generally the layout. Only if you're trying to squeeze a large sheet onto a small piece of paper would you choose window. Okay, the scale, the plotted scale, should say one to one. And the plot style table. This is how we allocate a pen width to the colors of our layers. So generally we're advising you to start off using black and color .ctb. Make sure it says it shows plot with styles. And we're going to use a portrait orientation for this particular design. Now click OK and then click close. Okay, the paper has resized and the viewport object which was previously tiny is still down here in the in the drawing. Now I can resize that by just clicking on its edge and then if I turn ortho off and turn my snaps off I can resize it to fill the sheet but it doesn't automatically change its contents. So I'm just resizing it to fit on the piece of paper a bit easier. Okay, when you're in paper space, using Z return A return fits the paper to the screen. Now we need to make it show what's in model space. So to do that, you go over the viewport edge and double click. Then double click the middle mouse button or type in Z return E return. Okay, so I went for the middle mouse button. I'm now in a position where I could set the scale. Okay, now my screen isn't allowing me to show the uh, the button for that that's within the software, so I'm going to demonstrate it using the zoom command. So type in Z, return, 1, forward slash, 75, XP. I know this is going to fit OK. So a slight change in the size of the objects there. It's set to a, an accurate scale now. Now, leave model space and double click in the grey. 
that will take you back to paper space. Create a new layer and call it viewports. And this is for holding just your viewport. What I generally tend to do is make this a pretty yucky color so I know it's something special. Okay, so I'm going to go for this strange looking pink, 233. And don't make it current because this is a non plotting layer. So if I bring the bring the dialog box over a wee bit, you should be able to just see the printing icon there. Set that. And then close the dialog box. So it's not a, not a safe layer to create, make current because everything you draw on it won't be printed. So click the viewport edge, change it onto layer viewports. Should change color to suit. Now let's have a closer look at what we've we've got. So if we try and do a test plot, so right click layout one, then click on plot. Or type in plot. Try a preview. If we zoom in, you can see the magenta lines have all become thick, the green lines for the background are thin. Ditto everything that's happening over here. The yellow for the doors is slightly thinner than the magenta used for the walls. Okay, well let's say we thought the, the magenta was a bit too heavy, we want a slightly thinner pen. So let's eg right click and exit the plot preview and cancel. And we go back to the page setup manager. No, actually we don't. We just go to the layers dialog and change the color for the layers. So instead of section heavy being magenta, make it white and OK. You can see what's happened here. Some of the lines in the section have gone bl black and some have stayed pink. Remember we brought some lines down from the plan. So all the lines in here should really be on section heavy. So let's just net back to model space and tidy that up. Okay, so just pick all the pink lines. Quite a few and put them onto section heavy. Press escape and we shouldn't have any pink lines in the section now. Now change the color of the the walls layer as well. Make that white and okay. I'm just going to shorten these section lines slightly. then go back to my layout. So any changes made in model space automatically reflect in any layout that is viewing that particular part of the drawing. So try a plot preview again. So plot and return, preview. Now the lines aren't so heavy. We can s we've got a bit more definition with the yellow objects here. So we've got green lines, pale blue, yellow, and now white lines. So the section gets its definition through the use of the CTB and the layer colors. Press escape, stop the plot preview, and cancel. OK, what I'd like to do now is fill in the walls with some color. So let's go back to the model space. It's a bit easier to do it in there. And we want to basically isolate just the walls and the heavy section layers. So let's t use the off button to turn off some of these layers. Okay, what I should do is make a new layer. Let's pull this back on. Create a new layer, and well, let's call this one fill. Okay, so it's not a hatching; it's kind of a solid fill. 
and we'll choose a color for this let's actually choose a color this time let's try color 43 and OK and make this current and close the dialog we can now turn off the uh, section background layer without affecting anything now let's try and hatch these actually selecting the objects that are there so these are individual lines they're not polylines so I'll try hatch again instead of user defined I'm going to choose a predefined pattern and from the list I would look for solid it's usually right at the top okay so there's no settings for solid obviously it doesn't have a scale it's just solid so I select objects and I'll try and pick all these lines and return let's preview it looks like it's worked press enter to accept that okay the hatching has automatically gone to the background so that because as I can because I can still see the white lines now if this has all been drawn absolutely cleanly it should hatch in one go but that might be a bit brave okay you would probably do it in smaller chunks but let's give it a go as the whole thing select objects pick the whole plan and return and preview we got away with it press enter because we're happy with that you could use the keyboard to bring back on all the layers minus L A return on return star return twice all the layers reappear let's have a look at our layout now and let's do a plot preview note the color is behind the black lines it's not obliterating the line detail. Now that's quite strong. But I like the tone, I like the color, but I don't like the strength of it. So I'm going to exit that and cancel. Now I'm going to go to the page setup manager, modify, and I'm going to edit the CTB. I'm going to change the density of the color for color 43. I click the edit button it opens up a, the plot style table editor if I scroll down to color 43 it uses uses brown but the screening is 100% it's 100% strength let's change it to 50% strength and then save and close okay and close now do a plot preview we should note that the color is muted it's diluted it with 50% white it's letting 50% more white paper color show through effectively so you have a very broad range of colors to work with okay now we're not going to cover annotating we're going to do that in a separate session later on but here's the finished drawing that could be printed if I plot it will say where do you want me to create the finished one and I could call this finished and save it takes a few seconds to process the plot but it should come up in Adobe Acrobat in a few seconds set away Okay, Adobe Acrobat has now got the drawing and it could be emailed to somebody or whatever. Okay, close that. And I hope that's been useful. It would be good practice to run through this uh, once or twice and you get very adept at using the software. Thanks.